There's a good reason you don't hear much about SeaWorld anymore. Starting around the release of the 2013 documentary Blackfish, SeaWorld has had a lot of terrible allegations come to light. Trainers have been killed by mistreated performing animals, they obtained their marine mammals through illicit operations, their tanks weren't sufficient to keep the animals healthy, it just goes on and on. There is literally a Deadpool comic where Deadpool is hired by not SeaWorld to protect the park from eco-terrorists, and he ends up joining the terrorists after seeing how not SeaWorld treats their animals. The the company has tried to course correct in recent years and they've always fought the accusations, but you Google SeaWorld these days and all that comes up are stories of how they grossly abused their killer whales. Which is why it's super awkward to see a licensed video game about SeaWorld's killer whale mascot. This is Shamu's Deep Sea Adventures on the GameCube, the bright, happy, cartoony kids game about the orca who died in 1971 and whose name has been assigned to countless other random killer whales who've also died prematurely due to living in captivity ever since. No more depressing musing on SeaWorld, I promise. I just needed an intro for the review. Cheese and rice, this game is ugly! The game's graphics aren't all that bad by GameCube standards, but some screens and levels have soft lighting effects applied to everything to where chunks of the game just look insanely blurry. Who the hell thought this was okay? Now I believe that it's easy to differentiate good and bad kids games because the bad ones think that kids are stupid. So let's play through the tutorial and see what the game generally thinks of its audience. See these drifting transparent forms of air? These are your air bubbles. <laughs> okay then, so the game thinks that kids are dribbling dipshits. Bubbles of air are air bubbles. That may be tied with ramps can be used as ramps for the most worthless statement in all video games. See this bottle of water? It's a water bottle. See the top of this table? It's a tabletop. See this puff that's rather jiggly? It's a jiggly puff. Eating krill balls will also help make your green bar stay full. You eat krill balls to recover health? Damn, maybe that's why the Krill won us dead so badly on the Orville. Seriously, watch the Orville, it's fantastic. Anyway, the game's tutorial is just one of Shamu's manatee friends explaining the game's items and mechanics in laborious detail for, and I timed it, six and a half minutes. The game's tutorial is a six and a half minute cutscene. You need to pick up air bubbles, which are bubbles of air, don't you know, so that you don't drown. I'm surprised Shamu doesn't drown during this whole spiel. Be sure to get plenty of air, otherwise you will lose your turn. The screen. In the center of it, you'll see this your inventory of what others you may and remember to will certainly the numbers on the krill ball to see if it's high enough. crack in the crystal. Everywhere the- You will be silent! And once the tutorial cutscene is over, you have to go pick up all the items and the game explains all this shit to you a SECOND TIME! This is a dirt simple game, yet they feel the need to force you through the tutorial twice! The game thinks you're an imbecile! Anyway, Shamu and his friend Horatio and the Manatee are hanging out at SeaWorld when the place is attacked by a Kraken. For no readily apparent reason. After chasing Shamu around for a little while, the Kraken just kind of screws off, and Shamu is told that he needs to battle the forces of Poseidon. For no readily apparent reason. You just do it. Anyway, the game is a side-scroller, which is disappointing since the box in the game's opening make it look like a 3D game. Each level gives you a few simple objectives, usually destroying an object, solving a dirt-simple puzzle, or most often tracking down keys and opening locks. Yes, throughout the game are little locks, where you have to rotate three circles until water flows to the center of the lock. You have to get water to the center of a lock that's underwater. Whatever. You have a health bar, an agility bar that you use for special attacks, and an oxygen meter that will never run out because an air bubble of air spawns every few feet. Seriously, why even have the air mechanic? For realism? This first level is pretty simple. You pick up some keys, attack some rocks to save Horatio because Shamu can totally break rocks apart with a single whack of his tail because realism! You want to open this jar of pickles for me? I loosened it for you. You solve two puzzles, and then you backtrack to the entrance to fight a boss, and at all times, a bright green arrow points directly to your next objective, guiding you by the nose the entire game so you don't get lost. The boss is... a crab that just kind of sits on the ground not doing anything. 
Directions come up telling you to use the double head bash special move, which has next to zero range to it, and somehow in the midst of fighting this boss, I almost die because the hit detection is wonky and there's no feedback to let you know when you take damage. Seriously, I'm getting my ass kicked here and I can't even tell that I've taken any hits. But I killed the boss guarding the exit and... The hell? This is the exit to the level, but I can't leave. Is this the exit? The guiding arrow vanished. Why the hell can't I leave? Directions come up and say go back and find the exit. I thought I did find the- Is this game broken or something? Desperate for some way of getting the game to work right, I open the pause menu, and I see an option labeled Mission Objectives. Collect 60 Kraken Crystals. You have got to be shitting me. So yeah, spread throughout the levels are bright purple crystals called Kraken Crystals. Not sure why Crystal is spelled with a K, other than it gives me a chance to troll that guy who keeps yelling that I'm a furry over Crystal from Star Fox. And the game doesn't let you exit a level until you've collected most, if not all, the crystals in that level. This requires traipsing over every damn corner of the map until you've tediously scoured every damn nook and cranny of every damn room, raided every slowly opening clamshell, and usually found a hidden room tucked away in the corner of the map with all your missing crystals in it. This is a boundless pain in the ass, tediously trudging back through the entire stage for a contrived fetch quest, made worse by the fact the camera doesn't pull out far enough for you to find items unless you're about right on top of them. This serves no purpose but to forcibly pad out a game that barely took me three and a half hours to finish, bogging down the gameplay with pointless, boring-ass, busy work. The first side-scrolling stage, you need to collect 60 crystals to win. You know how many there are total? 62! Miss three crystals and you can't leave! That's just actively trying to be a dick! Not every level in the game is a side-scroller. Some levels have you swim away from the Kraken, avoiding its tentacles in a mode that kinda reminds me of the boulders from Crash Bandicoot. If the game brought up bright arrows directly telling you where to go so that you didn't have to think. Some levels flip the tables. <laughs> and have you chase after an enemy instead. Here you have to chase the Kraken through a tunnel, using portals to maintain speed or else he gets away. Alright, mission comp- MISSION FAILED?! What the hell- Oh, you son of a bitch! If you don't grab enough crystals in the 3D levels, they force you to play the level over again, and in this stage, using a portal locks up the controls so you can't grab crystals. You actually have to ignore the portals to grab crystals and risk failing the level. So you have to actively sabotage the level's primary objective. Suck my ass! Also, just putting it out there, this Kraken sucks. Davy Jones' Kraken, or the Kraken from Clash of the Titans, could thrash Seawell and barely even notice it was there. And this one gets scared off by one killer whale? The second side-scrolling stage, Shamu gets trapped in some kind of vent by the Kraken and you need to find an escape. This is where you start to realize how abysmal the game's combat is. From this point on, every level's passages are downright clogged with enemies. You're constantly getting barraged with fish that lunge at you, eels that are hard to spot, urchins that take up most of a tunnel, and the walls are lined with plants that suck your health and are obscured by the cluttered-ass graphics so you can't freaking see them. I'm getting pinballed around hemorrhaging health and I just can't stop, and most of the levels don't have that many cruel balls to get back your health. Turns out getting killed just takes away a points from your score, which is currently at 2,500, but it's still a royal pain in the ass. Also, would it kill the game to give you some kind of feedback when you take a hit? I never realize that I'm dying until Horatio bitches that I need some food. You start the game with a tail-whacking bitch slap attack to fight the enemies, as well as a shriek that stuns every enemy on the screen, and a bubble shield that Shamu can apparently will into existence. The further you get, you gain special attacks, like manipulating water into concentrated blasts, or summoning fish to attack your enemies. It's explained that you get these powers from those pain-in-the-ass crystals, and the crystals are explained as being solidified kraken ink, so eating enough kraken snot turns you into Aquaman. But here's the problem, no matter what attack or superpower you land on an enemy, they only stay knocked out for, and I timed it, three and a half seconds! You can't actually kill any of the enemies, and most levels are obnoxiously clogged with enemies so you'd never catch a break from drowning in foes. Even worse, the special moves use up your agility meter, and agility drains like crazy when you take hits, it empties entirely if you die, and it only barely recharges if you find a health pickup, take more than a handful of hits, and you can't use the special attacks anyway. So then I did some experimenting. 
That killer whale shriek that's intended to stun the enemies, the shriek affects every enemy on the screen, it prevents all affected enemies from damaging you, and enemies actually stay out of your way longer when stunned than they do if you had landed a hit on them. The shriek basically kills everything on the screen for free. There is literally no point to engaging in the combat because you're far better off just popping the full screen stun attack every time an enemy appears. I ended up completely ignoring all the special moves I was unlocking because the free move you have at the start of the game is orders of magnitude more effective than any of the powers you can unlock. Now I don't ever have to bother with the combat, and my only problem is that I have to backtrack aimlessly for 10 minutes looking for the 6 crystals I'm missing to get the hell out of this level. 6 useless ass crystals, because I'm not using the powers they unlock anyway. Shamu escapes the lava vent, but he's still trapped in an underwater cave, so he has to escape through Atlantis. So not only does the sea world in this universe have an underwater escape tunnel directly to the ocean, but it's also a stone's throw away from the greatest mythical city of all time. You have another side-scroller stage where you have to find a key. It was at this point that I decided to check the control listing because I was kind of feeling guilty for not even trying out the special powers, and something caught my eye! Toggle minimap! This game has a damn minimap, and it marks where all the crystals are hidden? So I've been wasting all that time blindly backtracking for crystals for no damn reason?! How come the tutorial had time to tell me that air bubbles are bubbles of air, but it couldn't squeeze in? Oh, by the way, we figured out the game is dog shit, so here's a map to find all the crystals! From this point onward, the game was pathetically easy to beat. The game steers you by the nose to every objective, the puzzles literally amount to smashing an item or picking up keys, the map outright tells you where all the crystals are hidden, and the shriek attack takes out every enemy on the screen for free. What the hell else is left for the gameplay? It feels like the developers realized that the game was awful, terrible exploration, broken combat, and tedious collectibles, and their best solution was to just dumb down the gameplay until there was barely any gameplay left. You barely have to THINK to beat this game! Though even once you've cheesed the game into damn near playing itself, the game is still a tedious and annoying drudge with bad controls. Unless you make a really sharp turn, Shamu swims in a little circle every time you try and turn in a new direction. Combined with bouncing off an invisible cushion of air around every surface an enemy makes it tough to actually grab items instead of constantly swerving around them. It also makes it a royal pain to line up attacks with enemies, but if you're even attempting that, then you're playing the game wrong. Shamu spends a few levels hunting down keys to get into Atlantis because somehow there's only one door into a set of completely open underwater ruins. I know side-scroller video game logic, but piss off, this place should have like 50 entrances. Now, there's a cutscene before each level, made out of awkward-looking still photographs. The first several levels they use the cutscenes to explain basic gameplay mechanics you already know, and then, because the narrator likes to hear himself talk, the rest of the cutscenes walk through a level before you play the actual level. In this sorry excuse for a cinematic, Shamu finds the entrance to Atlantis, finds a key in a vent, smashes some rocks to seal the vent, and beats up a pufferfish boss and gets two more keys. And just when I'm wondering why the hell they bothered having Shamu fight a boss off screen, the level itself has you find a key in a volcano, seal the volcano with rocks, fight the pufferfish boss, and get two more keys. So the game thinks that kids are so dumb that each level has to play out twice to retain the plot. She says it's because I'm smart. I would be happy to inform her that you are not. Shamu collects some more keys, but then some viper fish steal your keys, and you have to chase the fish down. You have to ram into them by moving to the side and pressing A, but the ramming controls are crazy stiff, the enemies are small, and anything less than a direct hit doesn't count. And guess what? I beat the stage? game kicked me back to start because I didn't pick up enough crystals before killing the last enemy. So again, I have to purposefully ignore the level's objectives and sabotage myself to grab more useless ass crystals. The game is just wasting my damn time at this point. Shamu enters Atlantis, but I guess needs to open yet another door to get in so you have another side-scrolling stage. This level has you flip combinations of switches to open doors, but the color coding on the doors barely seems to line up, and it's held trying to remember where the doors are, so you just hit switches and easily check all the doors until you've got all the keys. This is also about the point where levels start having at least 20 more crystals than are needed to clear any of the stages. Not sure why the game was such a bitch about them earlier, and barely seems to care about the crystals anymore. You know, Atlantis is supposed to be majestic, wondrous, and awe-inspiring, so am I just checked out, or do the levels and environments of this game still look dull as all hell? This game's visual design is so boring. 
You finally get into Atlantis, and out of nowhere, Horatio is captured for... Um... So anyway, you follow the guards to see where they're taking him. Okay, what the hell? Unlike every other one of these 3D stages, Shamu doesn't swim forward automatically in this level. He'll kind of inch forward if you move the control stick around, but even fidgeting the stick around, Shamu barely seems to move. And even if I don't get killed by the enemies, I lose because Horatio and his guards get away while I'm struggling to get any movement. You fight the controls to get any kind of a response, desperately flailing on the controls just to inch your way forward, and while struggling to get the game to work in any vague capacity, you constantly get savaged by enemy fish that you can't hit because they swim in front of you to where the ram doesn't work. Eventually I check the game's controls and I find out there's a swim fast button and you have to constantly hold it down in this level or else Shamu doesn't move. It's the Z button. That tiny awkward depressed shoulder button, you have to hold it continuously for like five and a half minutes. Five and a half minutes doesn't seem that long. It feels like an eternity because the level still crawls along at a snail space as both Shamu and the guards barely freaking move. You cannot convince me that this is how the level is supposed to work. You cannot convince me that this was done on purpose. You don't manipulate Shamu's speed to avoid enemies or anything. You just flat out don't move because the level is broken. I think someone spilled coffee on the hard drive with this level and nobody could be bothered to fix it. My god, we gotta get better people. You do some more simple guided by the nose put key here and smash this thing quote unquote puzzles and you free Horatio so he can finally explain the plot. Yeah, about three quarters of the way through the game, entire game up to now has been aimless padding, finally introducing a plot. Poseidon has a new Atlantis, and he wants to raise it where SeaWorld is currently located and enslave all the fish at SeaWorld for his kingdom. Decent enough plot for little kids, but those of us with developed brains have questions. For one, what the hell is Poseidon going to do with enslaved fish if he raises Atlantis to the surface? And two, if Poseidon raised Atlantis literally anywhere else on the 70% of Earth's surface that's water, nobody would care or try to stop him. The only reason there's a conflict is that Poseidon doesn't have a real estate guy. You spend a blatant filler level collecting 16 pieces of a map with the game guiding you by the nose to each part, and then you spend another blatant filler level swimming to New Atlantis and then fighting a boss that's only vulnerable to special attacks, and because these enemies drain all your agility when I take hits, I was left frantically swimming around for any krill balls to restore enough agility to fight the boss. Poseidon starts raising New Atlantis, so you destroy three generators, all while the game keeps forcing you towards the ground so the control get even worse. And then the game remembers, oh yeah, we had a Kraken who hasn't appeared for a few hours, and the Kraken starts lifting the city and you whack its tentacles until it lets go. What's annoying about this level is that if you spend literally more than a few seconds attacking a tentacle, it starts spewing out constant clouds of poison that not only constantly freeze you in place and lock up your controls, but they damage you before the cloud has even rendered on the screen. Poison. 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 And yeah, get used to hearing Horatio yell poison every time you get poison because no matter how far you get into the game, he keeps chiming in to remind you what all the items and boxes and shit do because again, the game thinks you're too stupid to function. So you stop the Kraken, it chases you, it gets caught on a bit of Atlantis' structure which then breaks off, and then Poseidon finally deigns to appear in the game for the final boss fight. He fights you by shooting white balls, which you bounce back at him like we were reflecting key blasts in Dragon Ball Z. What's annoying is that Poseidon has an eye laser attack that seems to just automatically hit you and you can't dodge it. He outright just shoots you to death. I was going to try blocking it, but by my third crack at this fight, Poseidon seemed to have forgotten that he could do it. Once his health goes down, the game starts flashing button combos to use your special powers on him, but I mash all the combos and none of these attacks look like they're doing crap. Shamu's just flailing around in empty space. Oh, now he's dead just out of nowhere. Never mind. And then Shamu is just immediately back at SeaWorld. Yeah, instead of there being any kind of congratulations or celebration at having defeated the bad guy, it just immediately warps you back to SeaWorld and holds the game's ending to ransom until you've beaten a shitty minigame. 
A meter pops up, you stop it as high as you can, Shamu leaps out of the water, and then four button prompts appear and crap all seems to happen when I push any of the prompts. After about seven full minutes of trial and error, I figure out you mash each button while the arrow is over a given prompt, and also you ignore the Z prompt at the bottom of the screen because the game doesn't seem to react to it. And the completion score is so high that you need to execute this combo perfectly for a little over four straight minutes. Yep. You just enter the same one button combo for four minutes straight because nothing else gets you enough points. Great freaking minigame. Horatio congratulates Shamu for saving SeaWorld, and that chunk of Atlantis that presumably still has a rotting Kraken corpse stuck to its surfaces and becomes a new attraction at SeaWorld. The end. At least the game gives you a fireworks display when you win. It's a better ending than Devil's Third. This game is awful. Even grading on a generous curve for kids games, there's nothing redeemable about it. The controls suck, the graphics are mediocre, there's basically no story, a vast stretch of the already short game is blatant padding, and the gameplay is ungodly tedious if you're not using exploits, and boring as piss if you are. It just feels like they didn't care about the end product, with an entire level that barely works, and basically every gameplay mechanic having been dumbed down to non-effort rather than being fixed. About the only good thing about the game is that it was short and easy to play through, thus clearing up my schedule to play the Resident Evil 2 remake for my own amusement, a game that I really enjoyed even though I missed out on the B ranking for the story completion by 1 minute and 2 seconds! I've effectively already forgotten about Shamu's deep sea adventures, so if you don't mind… The game is never to be spoken of again.